All right, so here's another problem. We're pushing a block of ice up an incline, and we're given that the incline has a length of 5 meters and a height of 1 meter. And here's the block of ice, and we're pushing that block of ice up the incline, and we're exerting a force on it. We know the mass of the ice, so we're given that the mass is equal to 100 kilograms. We're given that we have a constant speed of 0 0.5 meters per second. Now the fact that that's a constant speed also tells us that the acceleration here is equal to zero. I'm going to need that. We're pushing with a force of 150 newtons, so I'll call that P is equal to 150 newtons, and that's parallel to the incline, so we have a direction. We'll take advantage of that in a moment. And of course we're given the distances of 5 meters and 1 meter. And we're asked to calculate the work done by all of the forces. Well, if we're going to do that, we need to know what all the forces are. So we'll draw a force diagram. So I have a gravitational force due to the Earth acting on the block of ice. I have a normal force due to the ramp acting on the block of ice. I have a normal force due to me acting on the block of ice. And I've got a frictional force due to the ramp acting on the block of ice. Given that we have an incline again, let's go ahead and put the x-axis up the incline, and the y-axis perpendicular to the incline. I can drop this down here, and I know this is some angle theta, and that's the same angle that we have right here between the horizontal and the ramp. The sum of the forces in the x-direction, I'm going to have P minus the frictional force minus mg sine theta, and that's going to equal zero because there is no acceleration. Remember, it's moving up the ramp at a constant speed. So the acceleration must be zero. There's no change in direction, no change in speed. Some of the forces in the y, I have F normal minus mg cosine theta, and that's also equal to zero. So if I list my forces, I have four, the normal force, the pushing force, gravity, and friction. Well, the normal force is going to do a certain amount of work equal to the magnitude of the normal force times j hat dotted with the displacement, which is 5 meters, times i hat. Now, I don't know what f normal is. I could calculate it out, but I don't need to because it's not going to do any work. So the work done by the normal force due to the ramp, as opposed to my pushing normal force, the work done by the normal force due to the ramp is equal to zero. The work done by my pushing force is equal to the magnitude of P, which was 150 newtons, and that's in the I hat direction, dotted with 5 meters, also in the I hat direction. And so this is 750 newton meters, or 750 joules. So that's the work done by the force I'm exerting on the object. There's work done by gravity, and that's going to equal 100 kilograms times 9.80 meters per second squared times 10 meters. Now keep in mind the displacement is that way, gravity is that way, so there's some angle in here which I'll call alpha. So this would be times the cosine of alpha. Well, let's examine our trigonometry here for a minute. Again, there's delta r, there's mg, both of those are vectors. This is my angle alpha, and this is an obtuse angle, clearly. And I can extend this down this way. And I can say, well, the cosine of alpha is the same as the cosine of this angle, which I'll call beta. So the cosine of alpha equals the cosine of beta, except there's a minus sign in there. Because the cosine of alpha, and alpha is an obtuse angle, must be negative. And the cosine of alpha then is negative the cosine of beta. So the cosine of beta is acute, so it has a positive value. Put a minus sign in front of it, and we get the cosine of alpha. But interestingly enough, if I look just at beta, and I'm going to cut a perpendicular here, this is the angle already defined as theta. And we know that the cosine of beta equals the sine of theta. The cosine of an angle is equal to the sine of its complement. Remember, complementary angles add up to 90 degrees. So you could try it out. The cosine of 30 degrees equals the sine of 60 degrees. Or the sine of 30 degrees equals the cosine of 60 degrees. Right? So given that, 
the cosine of alpha is equal to minus the cosine of beta, but the cosine of beta is the sine of theta. And so this becomes 980 newtons times 10 meters times the sine of theta. Oops, scratch that. That should be 5 meters. But there's a minus sign here. But 5 meters times the sine of theta. Let's look at the diagram. Here's theta. The sine of theta is equal to 1 meter over 5 meters. And so 5 meters times the sine of theta is equal to 1 meter. And so this part right here becomes 1 meter. And so I get minus 980 newtons times 1 meter. But notice that 1 meter, the displacement was up 1 meter. This is the component of the displacement parallel to gravity, because the force of gravity was straight down. So this is parallel to the force of gravity. It's up. Gravity is down. And the cosine of two angles at 180 degrees to each other is negative 1. And so it is the component of the displacement parallel to the force. So this is a good example of when using the component of displacement is better. So 1 meter times the 980 newtons, except they're in the opposite direction. So that's going to give us a minus sign. So minus one, 980 newton meters, or minus 980 joules. Finally, what about the frictional force? Well, I can see from the sum of the forces in the x direction, this equation right here, that the frictional force is equal to P minus mg sine theta. But P is equal to 150 newtons. mg is equal to 980 newtons. We've already calculated that. And the sine of theta is 1 over 5, 1 meter over 5 meters. Notice I don't even need to calculate theta. It's the sine of theta is 1 over 5. And so this is 150 newtons minus 196 newtons. And so I get minus 46 newtons, which really doesn't make sense. That says that friction is up the incline, but that's OK. This is, uh, the problem wasn't really well done as the issue here. My force should be bigger than 150 newtons. But we get the idea across. And so minus 46 newtons for the frictional force, work done by friction then, is minus 46 newtons times 5 meters, which is minus 230 joules. And so if I add all these together, now minus 46 newtons says that the frictional force is, in fact, up the incline. That doesn't really make sense, but that's the way the problem worked. I didn't give myself enough force. I should have made this bigger than 150 newtons, but that's all right. It is what it is. And so the work done by friction is equal to 46 newtons. Notice that's positive. That's because it's in the same direction as the displacement times 5 meters. And so that's 230 joules. And so if I look at the net work done, I have 750 joules. I have 230 joules. That adds up to 980 joules. I have negative 980 joules due to gravity. And so the net work done by all of these forces, of course the normal force over here had 0 joules, the net work done by all of those forces is 0. And we'll come back to that later on. OK, let's take a look at the work done by a couple of specific forces. WG, I'll call the work done by gravity. MG is the force due to gravity. That's always in the minus J direction. Actually, I shouldn't say that. It's not always in the minus J direction. Let's assume that X is to the right and Y is up. Given that, the work done by gravity is minus MG in the J direction times the displacement, which I'll call delta R. That's a vector quantity. And these are a dot product. And so this will be equal to minus mg times j hat dotted with delta r, which is going to have a displacement in the x direction. I'll call that delta x times i hat, plus a displacement in the y direction, which I'll call delta y times j hat. That's the net displacement. doesn't matter how I get there. My path could be convoluted, but my delta r has a specific value. Here's delta x, and here's delta y. doesn't matter how I got there. That's my displacement. The force is constant, so it comes out of the integral. And so when I do my integration, it's just the integral of dr, and that's just delta r. So this becomes minus mg times delta y. j hat times j hat is 1. j hat dot i hat is 0, so that part goes away. And this becomes the work done by gravity. So minus mg, because it's pointing down, times delta y, not delta x, times delta y.
Now, if we look at the situation where gravity is far from the Earth, so let's say the Earth is here, there's the center of the Earth, and here's an object out here, then there's a distance between the two, call that r sub 1. Now, the force due to gravity, we'll talk about this more later in the semester, is equal to g, that's the universal gravitational constant, times mass 1 times mass 2, where this body here would be mass 1 and this body out here has mass 2, all divided by the separation between the two objects, r squared times e sub r hat. e is a commonly used letter for unit vector notation. Of course, the hat over the top tells us it's a unit vector, and r tells us it's along that line going from one mass to the other. Gravity is always attractive, so the force will be inward. So that's the force due to gravity. And since r is outward and the force is inward, we'll put a minus sign there. So f is equal to minus g m1 m2 over r squared e sub r. Now if I take mass m2 and I move it out to here to a final position r2, then to find the work done, I'm going to integrate minus g m1 m2 over r squared e radial dotted with dr. Now dr, since it's a displacement along the radial direction, will also be e radial. And I'm going to integrate from r1 to r2. So this will be the work done by gravity far from the Earth. So I'm going to use a capital G for gravity. And it kind of goes along with the universal gravitational constant here, big G. And that's a constant, so it's going to come out of the integral. So with the masses, they don't change with time, at least not in the simple case. So I end up with minus g m1 m2, the integral from r1 to r2, 1 over r squared dr. I have e sub r dot e sub r, but that's just 1, okay? because they're parallel unit vectors. They just give me 1. So this becomes minus g m1 m2. The integral of 1 over r squared is minus 1 over r. Evaluate now from distance r1 to distance r2. Okay, the dot product has really eliminated these unit or these vectors here, and so I get minus g m1 m2. Uh, this minus and that minus will cancel, so that becomes plus, and it's one over r2 minus one over r1, and that would be the work done by gravity when I move from r1 to r2. Now, if you think about it, the gravitational force is inward, the displacement was outward, that should be negative, but in fact it is, because R2 is large, R1 is small, so R1 one over R2 then is small, minus 1 over R1, which is large, a small number minus a large number is negative, so the signs do work out. Really good to keep in mind your signs.